A way has been found to accomplish the impossible. With pretzel tying machines, which can produce 50 hand tied pretzels a minute. Hello, my name is Hal Qualwasser. When I went and got my public education, it was sort of mass production style. There was one textbook taught one way by one teacher in one classroom. For most of the 20th century, America deemed that sufficient. But kids are not widgets. Mothers did not give birth to baby Model Ts. There's no assembly line in this business. You treat every child as an individual work of art. You really have to start from the basic point of what do I want the teacher, student transaction to look like, and then reconstruct everything around it. We're moving from this mass production system to this professional, and I call it artisanal, as in you're sort of creating individual works of art, except they happen to be 17-year-old high school graduates, and that that is systemic change. That's a much more complicated way of learning. It puts a lot more burden on teachers. It's a lot more challenging. But here's the real point. It changes the system. In the old days, where all the decision-making was concentrated in the central office, and what the superintendent wanted done was to have teachers simply follow the rules and use the principles to enforce that the teachers did follow those rules. That, that model can't work now. So in 2007, 2008, as school reform got to be a much hotter topic, I looked at what was being talked about in terms of uh, likely school reform measures. And I said, you know, this just isn't going to work because these measures don't get at the heart of what is making good schools good. I went out across the country and went to 40 high-performing and transforming school districts. The two key fundamental attitudes in these successful districts were one, student achievement is everything. It is the lodestar by which all other decisions are guided. And two, there are no excuses around here. It doesn't matter how many of our students are low income or minority or don't speak English well or have learning uh, challenges, we can educate them. They set goals. They develop benchmarks to tell themselves whether they were in fact were achieving those goals. If they weren't achieving those goals, they would own up to the fact that they'd failed and they'd try something else. What all of these districts have demonstrated is that it all has to relate back to does it change the transaction between the student and the teacher, because that's what drives all of this reform. Every service business in this country, and education after all is a service, will say to you, the way to meet our customers' needs is to drive decision making out to the edge and to empower those who actually deal with the customers to make decisions about how that service should be delivered to that customer. It makes sense for law, it makes sense for medicine, it makes sense for education. As I say in the book, you can't lose sight of the customer, and that child, regularly under mass production, was lost sight of. The fundamental underlying vision of the book is that it takes that grand community coalition to drive change. There are no silver bullets and there are no demons. There's no one thing or there's no one person you can change or get rid of that will fix things. You need teachers, you need administrators, you need a variety of people. To demonize any of them, to take sides in this debate in that sense, is not helpful. What is helpful is I want to get to a certain result, and I want all of you, whether you're a teacher, you're a union leader, you're a superintendent, you're a state legislator, I want you all on the side of doing right by kids. So here's the book that in very simple terms lays out where we're going and lays out how you as a parent or as a voter can help us get there.